Good morning. Welcome to New Beginnings Wesleyan Church's online service. My name is Chelsea and um, I just want to start by saying thank you for all the prayers that all of you offered this last week and a half as uh, I caught some kind of a flu bug. Good news was it wasn't COVID and I just thank you for praying for me and my family just to be able to feel better and I'm very excited to be back here this morning with all of you. Uh, I've missed being able to just uh, be a part of the process of saying good morning to you on Sunday mornings and to be here with you. So today I just wanted to bring some announcements and talk about a few things and share some prayer time before we go into worship. Uh, for our announcements this morning, just want to put out that reminder that we're going to have a Zoom hangout right after church. So all of our Zoom links you'll be able to see in the comments below. Uh, so if you'd like to join us for any of these, please jump onto that. And so this morning, uh, right after our service ends, we're going to jump on a Zoom call and be able to hang out and talk with one another. And then on Tuesday night is our prayer time. Uh, time to just come together and really dive into prayer a lot deeper and spend some good quality time together. And that'll be 7 o'clock on Tuesday night. And then Thursday night at 7 o'clock, we're going to be doing our Bible study where we're going to talk a lot more about what uh, Pastor Johnny will be preaching about today. Uh, and I know he's going to be talking about Samuel, so I'm looking forward to that on Thursday morning or Thursday at 7 p.m. So again, just take a look at those uh, Zoom links right in the comments below. Um, and if you need any help getting joining Zoom or whatnot, you can just uh, call Johnny and I'll put his phone number will be in the comments below as well. So if you need some help jumping on that, we would be happy to help you do that. So I, I have a, a sad announcement to be able to report today. We've been praying for Cody, who he wasn't quite one years old. Um, lots of heart surgeries, just has been doing a most incredible battle and his little body went through so much and um, last Sunday he went to be with the Lord and um, I know that's that's very hard for a lot of people and we're going to be lifting the whole family up in prayer today but I wanted to read a post uh, from his mom and so forgive me while I hold my phone and read it to you but I just want to read what her words are. So services will be held on July 11th 2020 at 3 p.m. The location will be at the Sierra View Cemetery in all of Hearst, California. She says she wanted to give all friends and family along with those who have not she has not had the opportunity to meet to be able to come. Cody may have not been old enough to go to school and make friends but he has made friends all over the world. Our family welcomes all to come to Cody's celebration of life and do a balloon release for Cody. Uh, they will be providing a hundred balloons, blue and red. They are asking that everyone who attends to be able to wear a mask because they want to be able to keep everyone safe. And so they are inviting, if you if you are able to make that on July 11th at 3 p.m., I know that would mean a lot for the family, be able to just go, be there, release some balloons, and just remember what an incredible little boy he is. Um, and be able to do that. So if you have any other questions, you can feel free to reach out to myself uh, or Johnny as well, and we can give you any more details that are that are, that you may need. Um, and so with that, I'd like to go into some time of prayer. We're going to pray for some some specific things, and definitely want to be lifting Cody's family up, and just want to be praying for some things that are going on in in our area. So if you would join me, uh, please pray with me. Lord, first we just thank you for this opportunity to be able to have an online platform for church as um, some are still able to stay home and be able to just still continue to connect with you in that way. We just thank you for this, this opportunity to be able to do this. Lord, um, we want to lift up Cody's family, the Waters family, Lord. Um, our hearts hurt so much. We know that they've been through so much and Cody put up such an amazing fight and what a sweet little boy. And we just pray that you will touch their hearts, Lord. This is this is a painful and difficult time. And we just pray that you would come alongside of them. That you would walk with them. Help them to rest at night. Help flood them with beautiful memories of Cody. Lord, his celebration of life is going to be coming up. And we just pray that this little boy has touched so many hearts throughout the world. And we pray that... that the response at his celebration of life will just be something amazing, Lord, and, and that his family will just feel the love and the impact that he has made to so many of us. And Lord, we thank you for this opportunity through Facebook to be able to get to know and see and watch and pray alongside. And 
Lord, we pray that this community that has come to know him will continue to pray over this family, support them, and love them through this time. Lord, I just pray that you would help surround them with people who will have kind and uplifting words. And Lord, for those of us, when we come and we want to talk and we don't always know what to say, that sometimes maybe even just being quiet and being there is, is a great thing. Lord, we know that so many things are coming into place and they're having to arrange so many things. We pray that you will give them peace and that all arrangements will go smoothly. And just pray that you will walk alongside and comfort them as they, they go through this time, Lord. God, we have a lot of people that we know who are having health issues right now. First, we want to lift up Celia Jolly, Lord. She's battling this flu thing that seems to be going around, and we're so grateful it's not coronavirus, but it is really taking a toll on her body, and she's just still having a hard time recovering from this. I pray that you would just touch her body and heal her. I pray that she would start to feel better, start to overcome this, um, and just move past this flu. Lord, we pray for so many who are, are battling cancers, uh, battling flu, battling all kinds of illnesses, strokes, seizures, heart issues, all of that, Lord. We pray right now, especially in this time when it's so scary to go to a doctor's office or to, to have a hospital stay, that you would come alongside all of those and, and help comfort them. For those who need surgery, we pray that you would open the doors for them to be able to do that and that you would just protect them as they enter hospitals and protect them from this coronavirus, Lord, and any other illness that may come along when their bodies are battling something else, Lord. And God, we want to pray for specifically about this coronavirus. Um, we, we see in California that um, people are getting this more and more and it's spreading. And Lord, we pray that it will do the least amount of damage, that, that people will get this and it will be an easy recovery. But Lord, we know many more are in the hospital right now. And Lord, we want to pray for them. This is such a scary time. They have to leave their family to go in knowing that they have this unknown virus and that they're battling this in such a scary way and, and not knowing what's going to happen. And Lord, that's such a scary and frightening place to be. I pray that you would touch each and every one of them. I pray that they would come to know you in the midst of this. I pray that you would help those who are on ventilators to be able to recover and come off of them. I pray that our death toll rate will not be great. I pray that it will... That, that it will not continue to grow. I pray for those family members who can't be there with their loved ones who are in the hospital battling this. I pray that you would be with them, that you would provide them some comfort, that they will be able to find ways through telephone calls and whatnot to still connect and be that comfort and, and caring through that. And we just pray for everybody who's battling through this and all of the unknowns, that you'll just bring a peace and a comfort to what's occurring, Lord. We just thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you do. We thank you for your healing touch. We thank you for all that you are, Lord. And I thank you for today. Amen. Well, it's wonderful to be able to be here with you again this morning. And I just want to welcome Brian and Mary as they take us through some worship. Good morning, church Good morning. family. You know, I'm Brian. This is Mary. And uh, we're into our worship set of our service and we'd just like to welcome everybody to just just relax come into the presence of the Lord and lift his name up and worship and um, you know and, and you know our starting song is you know come now is the time to worship so just open yourself up you know just when the praises go up the blessings will come down and let's just find comfort and peace and joy in singing to the Lord amen, amen.
tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Willingly refuse to surrender our lives. Willingly our knees will bow. With all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, we gladly choose you now. that he is God, believer, non-believer. I, myself, I think I can speak for Mary, that you know what, we're looking forward to that day, Amen. to be able to just bow our knees and look at Jesus and say, you are God, you are my Savior, you are the King on the throne of my heart, you know, and we love to worship you. you know.
take this offering that I bring Humbly I fall on my knees To proclaim your everything My life is nothing without you Take my hand and lead me through You are my sustaining love I live children of God, children of the light. And um, I praise the Lord the day that I saw the light. What about you? Amen. Amen. How about you, Pastor? <laughs> Amen. How about you, family? Aren't you glad the day that you saw the light and you could just look up to the Lord and say, praise the Lord, I saw the light. Amen. <laughs> Like when 
Thank you for purchasing my my life. You know, for what you did for us, Lord. You know, so we just want to thank you for worshiping with us today. I miss I miss seeing you all. I really do. My heart aches to see you guys. My heart aches to hug you guys. My heart aches to be able to worship with you in person. But I know God's got this. God's in control of this. And we gotta we gotta persevere. We gotta hold tight. Hold on to our faith. Hold on to our, you know, the promises that God has given to us. And know that, you know, we those who persevere to the end are gonna be saved. So be strong my family in church, my family in Christ. You know, and uh, thank you so much for worshiping with us today. And at this time, Jesus loves you. We love you. Toodles. Morning, and uh, so thankful to Brian and Mary who continue to lead us in our online worship time and really just enjoy uh, every week the effort that they put into choosing the songs to just um, to lead us and just get us uh, in a great spot for worship. And so, um, so thankful to be with you in this online worship service. My name is Johnny Burke, along with Chelsea that you saw earlier. We co-pastor New Beginnings. And um, we are going to be talking about a guy named Samuel today. So if you have your Bible at home, uh, you're going to want to turn it to, to 1 Samuel. We're going to be in several chapters. We're going to be exclusively in that book today. So I just want to give you a heads up. While we go through uh, talking about Samuel, while we're in the book 1 Samuel, four things I want you to be thinking about today because we don't want Sunday online service and Sunday services to be just a Sunday club. We want to be growing in our relationship with Christ. And right now, uh, through distant stuff, it's a little bit more of a challenge. That's why we have our Tuesday night prayer time, our Thursday night Bible study. Don't forget about the after church hangout that's going to happen right after uh, the service, right around 11 o'clock. Uh, hopefully you can join us to that on Zoom. And that's just opportunities for us to come together, to be growing together during this time where we're doing some more social distancing. We want to be growing in our walk. So when we're going through scripture, and on Sunday mornings especially, we want to be looking at four questions as we go through our service. First one is this, what did I hear in the scriptures today? So if you hear something in 1 Samuel you've never heard before, or it catches you, or something you would forgot about, write it down so you can go back. Or just write down the scriptures as I go through them, and you can review them later. Might be a good idea for joining our Thursday night Bible study where we're going to talk about Samuel. Second question is this, what did the Holy Spirit say to me while the pastor was speaking. Today, that's me who's speaking. And it's not what did I hear from Pastor Johnny, it's what did God say while I was speaking. It might have to do with Samuel, it might have to do with something else the Holy Spirit's impressing on your life in this very moment. Next question is this, what am I going to do about it? If the Holy Spirit is telling you something today, if the Holy Spirit is conveying something to you either through these scriptures or while I'm speaking or whatever it may be, 
What are you going to do to take action for whatever the Holy Spirit's putting upon your heart? Last question that Pastor Chelsea and I want you to know is, how can we help you out with that? If you want to grow deeper in your relationship with God and the Holy Spirit is prompting you in a direction, we want to help. How can we help you? We are available. And I know that is a common conception that we are busy people. And you know what? We are. But... We're not too busy to help you to grow in your walk because that's what we're here to do. And as your pastoral team, that's what we want to help you to do as we continue this journey together. So let's get talking about Samuel today as you have those things in mind today. It's another testimony because this whole year, and we're like halfway through the year now, right? This is the last weekend in June, so we're like officially halfway through the year. We've been talking about testimonies of biblical characters. In other words, historical people who really lived and breathed and had experiences with God. And this week, we're talking about Samuel. Uh, all throughout the series, I've been talking about what I call my air timeline, where we follow this timeline in air that I've made with my hands of someone's before God experience, their experience with God, the calling God put on their life, the after experience where they really received their transformation as they went on their journey, and then their legacy or how they're remembered. Today with Samuel, we're going to walk through a couple stops on his waypoints, and then just an overall theme to think about. But I would invite you to stop wherever in Samuel's life that we talk about this morning. And there's a lot more because there's two books of Samuel and we're only getting through about six or seven sets of verses today. But we are going to be reading a lot. But write down what it is that strikes you in your own personal journey. On Wednesday night, the mission, if you're with us, uh, we talked about uh, Samson, how, or excuse me, Samson. Samson was last week. Samuel is this week, right? Uh, boy, that's going to be, I guarantee that's going to come out wrong at least one other time. So here's the, here's the deal. So we talked about at the mission on Wednesday night how Samuel's story is a story of beginnings and endings. And that's true. And we're going to review a few this part of this here. So we're going to go on, but Samuel is the last judge of Israel before they go in the time of kings. Last week, we talked about Samson, who was the last judge in the book of Judges, but he was not Israel's last judge. Samuel's the last judge. Here's your trivia question for today. Write down the answer. See if you're right as we come across it. Who was the first king of Israel appointed by Samuel that the people demanded? Write that answer down. See if you got it right. Let's start talking about Samuel's story. Let's move forward here. Let's talk about his beginning. So we're going to start right in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 9 through 18, because we are going to meet a woman named Hannah, who's Samuel's mom. She was married to a man who had multiple wives, and she couldn't have any kids. And here's her story, which becomes Samuel's beginning. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 9 through 18 say this. Once, after a sacrificial meal at Shiloh, Hannah got up and went to pray. Eli the priest was sitting at his customary place beside the entrance of the tabernacle. Hannah was in deep anguish, crying bitterly as she prayed to the Lord. And she made this vow. O Lord of heaven's armies, if you will look upon my sorrow and answer my prayer and give me a son, then I will give him back to you. He will be yours for his entire lifetime, and as a sign that it has been, he has been dedicated to the Lord, his hair will never be cut. As she was praying to the Lord, Eli watched her. Seeing her lips moving but no sound, he thought she had been drinking. Must you come in here drunk, he demanded. Throw away your wine. Oh no, sir, she replied. I haven't been drinking wine or anything stronger, but I am very discouraged, and I was pouring out my heart to the Lord. Don't think I'm a wicked woman. For I have been praying out of great anguish and sorrow. In that case, Eli said, Go in peace. May the God of Israel grant the request you have asked of him. Oh, thank you, sir, she exclaimed. Then she went back and began to eat again, and she was no longer sad. And as we continue through the book of Samuel, we find out that, in fact, she was answered in her prayer. She had a baby boy, conceived a baby boy with her husband. His name was Samuel. And then the next year she returned and dedicated him to the Lord. But not like a dedication we do in church where we have the family come up front and we have the parents pledge and the family that they will raise the child up. She's already done that. She's already said that she would give them Nazarite vow. Remember when we talked about the Nazarite vow with Samson about not cutting the hair, not drinking alcohol? She's done that before her son's even born. And then she returns and literally gives him to Eli the priest so that he would be raised up in the temple as a servant of the Lord. She meant her vow. And then she's blessed and has five more children and has a wonderful life and sees her son every year. So Samuel starts to grow up as a baby 
living in the temple, being taken care of by Eli and whoever else would have been in the temple at that time. And as we read on, we find that Eli's sons who were in charge of many things were doing some really wicked things and he really couldn't get them in, into grips. And as Samuel's starting to get a little bit older, we come to 1 Samuel chapter 3. And this is the pivotal moment in Samuel's life. His mom has set the stage. His beginning has been set as good as you could possibly imagine it. And now things start to change for him in his own personal life as just a boy. 1 Samuel chapter 3 is an incredible one. I'm going to read the whole chapter because you really can't shortcut this, but don't worry, it's only about 21 verses. Here's what it says, 1 Samuel chapter 3. Meanwhile, the boy Samuel served the Lord by assisting Eli. Now in those days, messages from the Lord were very rare, and visions were quite uncommon. One night, Eli, who was almost blind by now, had gone to bed. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was sleeping in the tabernacle near the ark of God. Suddenly the Lord called out, Samuel. Yes, Samuel replied, what is it? He got up and ran to Eli. Here I am, did you call me? I didn't call you, Eli replied. Go back to bed. So he did. Then the Lord called again, Samuel. Again, Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am, did you call me? I didn't call you, my son, Eli said. Go back to bed. Samuel did not yet know the Lord because he had never had a message from the Lord before. So the Lord called a third time, and once more Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am, did you call me? Then Eli realized it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So he said to Samuel, Go and lie down again. And if someone calls again, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed. And the Lord came and called as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel replied, Speak, your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, I am about to do a shocking thing in Israel. I am going to carry out all my threats against Eli and his family from beginning to end. I have warned him that judgment is coming upon his family forever because his sons are blaspheming God, and he hasn't disciplined them. So I have vowed that the sins of Eli and his sons will never be forgiven by sacrifices or offerings. Samuel stayed in bed until morning, then got up and opened the doors of the tabernacle as usual. He was afraid to tell Eli what the Lord had said to him. But Eli called to him and said, Samuel, my son. Here I am, Samuel replied. What did the Lord say to you? Tell me everything and may God strike you and even kill you if you hide anything from me. So Samuel told Eli everything and he didn't hold anything back. It is the Lord's will, Eli replied. Let him do what he thinks best. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and everything Samuel said proved to be reliable and all Israel, from Dan in the north to Beersheba in the south, knew that Samuel was confirmed as a prophet of the Lord. The Lord continued to appear at Shiloh and gave messages to Samuel there at the tabernacle. And Samuel's words went out to all the people of Israel. That is Samuel chapter 3. That is an incredibly pivotal moment in his life. That is the moment that Samuel hears God for the first time literally hears his voice. And even on that last time when God says, the Lord came and said his name again. The first few times it just said the Lord cried out his name. Then he says, the Lord came. So God was there with Samuel and he hears him. And it is an incredible, incredible moment for any of us to experience such a thing. But during that time where it said that messages from the Lord were rare at that time, I wonder if that's like today. Are messages from the Lord rare today? Some people do hear from God. I've heard from God before. Is this a special thing? What was going on in that moment? What was going on was Israel was in trouble, and they needed a leader, and they needed somebody that would listen to the Lord. And that man, Samuel, whose beginnings were cemented by his mother's vow and her dedication to the Lord, and being raised up by Eli in the temple, were brought to fruition. And then it says in verse 19, the Lord was with him in everything he was reliable. From that moment on, God was with Samuel, continually leading him through things. You know what's neat about that? Samuel heard the Lord while he was in church, right? He was in the tabernacle, and he was asleep. So here's something for you. If you ever fall asleep in church, you got a chance to hear from the Lord too. But you got to wake up, and you got to listen and say, Speak, your servant is listening. So just a reminder, if you ever fall asleep in church, you're just like Samuel.
<laughs> so Samuel goes on and he continues to lead the people because God is with them. And he's starting to lead the people back to the Lord because under Eli's reign, they have started to drift, especially under Eli's sons. And then we get to 1 Samuel chapter 7 and we hear a little bit about how he does this leading, how exactly Samuel leads the people. 1 Samuel chapter 7 verses 3 through 6 say this, Then Samuel said to all the people of Israel, If you want to return to the Lord with all your hearts, get rid of the, your foreign gods and your images of Ashtoreth. Turn your hearts to the Lord and obey Him alone. Then He will rescue you from the Philistines. So the Israelites got rid of all the images of Baal and Ashtoreth and worship only the Lord. Then Samuel told them, Gather all of Israel to Mizpah, and I will pray to the Lord for you. So they gathered at Mizpah, and in a great ceremony drew water from a well and poured it out before the Lord. They also went without food all day and confessed that they had sinned against the Lord. It was at Mizpah that Samuel became Israel's judge. How does Samuel come into a position of leadership? Is it through knowledge of schooling? Is it through strength and might and power of knowing how to lead an army? No. It's from his dedication and focus on God and telling the people they needed to turn back to God and throw away all the other false gods that they had been following too. It doesn't say that they had stopped following God totally. He said, if you want to turn your hearts totally to the Lord, because they were doing kind of a split thing, a little bit of God, a little bit of Baal, a little bit of God, a little bit of Ashtoreth, a little bit of this, Maybe we experience that in our own life, where we do a little bit of God on Sunday mornings, and then Monday morning, what becomes our God? Or Thursday nights, what becomes our God? Or you fill in the blank. Maybe this is a call this morning for us to turn our hearts fully to the Lord, because that's what Samuel did to the people by focusing on God and having them turn from everything. And then he goes into a prayer for the people. And they go to war with Philistine, and they are scared, and they say, please pray for us. And he prays, and he offers up a sacrifice. And the whole time that he is judging Israel during his lifetime, it says in the scripture, it goes on to say that the Lord gives them victory over the Philistines during this time. Philistines were Israel's great enemy during that time, and they were constantly under attack from them. But during Samuel's reign as judge, they had victory constantly. Because his heart was set upon the Lord, and the Lord gave them victory in all those things. What an incredible beginning. What an incredible middle, if you will, as Samuel has grown up and has become leader of Israel, and now he's leading the people, and they're finding success and victory. And it's really easy to think, oh, you know what? Everything must have been perfect his whole life, because it says the Lord was with him, and everything was reliable when we read these verses. But just a chapter later, we hear something that's kind of shocking. It's in 1 Samuel chapter 8. Let me read from verses 1 through 9 in 1 Samuel chapter 8. It says, As Samuel grew old, so he's been going on and leading for decades, and it doesn't say how old, but this is what it says. He appointed his sons to be judges over Israel. Joel and Abijah, his oldest sons, held court in Beersheba, but they were not like their father, for they were greedy for money. They accepted bribes and perverted justice. Finally, all the elders of Israel met at Ramah to discuss the matter with Samuel. Look, they told him, you are now old and your sons are not like you. Give us a king to judge us like all the other nations have. Samuel was displeased with the request and went to the Lord for guidance. Do everything they say to you, the Lord replied, for they are rejecting me, not you. They don't want me to be their king any longer. Ever since I brought them from Egypt, they have continually abandoned me and followed other gods. And now they are giving you the same treatment. Do as they ask, but solemnly warn them about the way a king will reign over them. And all of a sudden, we go from this incredible upward slope of Samuel being dedicated to the Lord by his mom before he's born, and then being raised up in the house of God, and then hearing from God, and then going forward, leading the people to God, and having victory over Philistines, and then he appoints his sons to be judges, and all of a sudden, the wheels start to fall off this roller coaster and starts to take a dive, because it says his sons weren't like him. 
And not only that, because his sons were not doing right and starting to go downhill, the people saw this. And instead of asking to help turn the sons back to the Lord or do it themselves, they say, no, this whole judge thing's not working. We need a king to rule us. And they reject Samuel, but really they're rejecting God. And we think, oh, I don't know how you think about this, but I think here, did Samuel go wrong? Why did his boys rebel? Why did the people rebel? What did Samuel do wrong? It said there that he was reliable throughout his life. It said that God was with him throughout his life. What did Samuel do wrong? I don't know that he did anything wrong at all. Because just a few chapters later, one of the last conversations Samuel has as a leader, after he's already told the people that they get to have their king, that God is going to let them have it, <clears throat> and the king thing is not going to work out well. He gives them a warning in advance and lets it happen. But he, God never forces us to do anything. He gives us free will. And the people of Israel wanted a king, and he gave them their king. And in Samuel's last conversation as leader of the people, he makes this big speech in 1 Samuel chapter 12. I'm going to read verses 1 through 7, and we get an idea of what went wrong or did anything go wrong. Because this is what it says. Then Samuel addressed all Israel. I have done as you asked and given you a king. Your king is now your leader. Do you know what his king's name was? It was Saul. Did you write down Saul of the trivia question earlier? Give yourself a gold star. That's the only prize we got for you today. Maybe put in the comments, I got it right. Whatever you want to do is great. But let's keep going. Your king is now your leader. I stand here before you, an old, gray-haired man, and my sons serve you. I have served as your leader from the time I was a boy to this very day. Now testify against me in the presence of the Lord and before his anointed one. Whose ox or donkey have I stolen? Have I ever cheated any of you? Have I ever oppressed you? Have I ever taken a bribe and per perverted justice? Tell me and I will make right whatever I have done wrong. No, they replied, you have never cheated us, oppressed us, and you have never taken even a single bribe. The Lord and his anointed one are my witnesses today, Samuel declared, that my hands are clean. Yes, he is a witness, they replied. It was the Lord who appointed Moses and Aaron, Samuel continued. He brought your ancestors out of the land of Egypt. Now stand here quietly before the Lord as I remind you of all the great things the Lord has done for you and your ancestors. Samuel goes on to remind the people of what God has done, and then he shows them that God still hears from him, and that God is displeased with the people, and you can read all about it, and we can talk about it Thursday at the Bible study. But in that last moment, Samuel throws down quite a statement. Have I ever done any of you wrong? Any of you? From a little tiny thing to great big thing. If so, tell me now and I'll make it up. If not, testify in the Lord's presence that that is true. And not one person in all of Israel can say that he did them wrong. Not one person can say that he accepted even one little tiny bribe. Maybe a cup of coffee in the morning or something like that. I don't know what the bribes were back then. But he didn't do anything wrong, it says. Now, it doesn't say he didn't sin but he certainly didn't do anything against the people. It appears that Samuel's life was one that was lived for the Lord, doing the right thing all the time. So why did his boys rebel? Why did the people rebel? Why did things start to go downhill? Well, for the very reason that they went uphill for Samuel in the first place. Our Lord has given us free will. And when Samuel was living in the tabernacle and heard the voice of God, he was given a great piece of advice from Eli. Eli said to him, the next time you hear God's voice, tell him, speak, for your servant is listening. And Samuel took that piece of advice, listened to the Lord, and followed him his whole life. He could have said, I'm going back to sleep. He had that choice. No one forced him to do anything. And I suspect, as he got older, that there was times where his sons said, Ah, that's too much work. I'm going to go back to sleep. 
or I'm not going to do that thing, or it's easier to do this, or boy, that sure looks nice. I wouldn't mind taking a bribe to do this one thing, or having a little more wealth, or do better than my dad did, because they have free will also. And when the people of Israel saw that these boys were not going to be like their dad, through no fault of the father himself, they could have made a choice to, to rally as a people to turn back toward God. But instead, they wanted a man to rule over them. And they didn't want him to be a priestly man anymore. They didn't want to judge someone who was a prophet who supposedly heard from God. They wanted a king who would rule with might and power so they could fight against their enemies, even though they had had victory over the Philistines the entire, team that Sam, entire time that Samuel had ruled. See, this free will thing gets in the way. It can be the greatest thing in the world for us, or it can be our absolute destruction. So there's a couple things I think we can pull away from this today. The first one is that the Lord has given you free will also. What are you going to do with it? What am I going to do with it? I can tell you right now, when I read the words of Samuel as he stands in front of the people, as he's about to walk away from his leadership, he says, Have I ever done you wrong? Go ahead and tell me right now. I wouldn't say that in front of a group of people. I know I've hurt people in the past. I know I've made bad decisions. I know I've made decisions that I didn't think were so bad that would seem to be bad later on. I've made decisions I thought were good that seemed to be terrible later on. There's all kinds of things. I've hurt people's feelings and some of the things I've never even known about. I would never say that in front of a group of people. I would be scared of someone coming up and saying, remember when you did this and did that and all those things. I do try and fix things when I do find out about them, but... To have the confidence of Samuel to stand up in front of people and say that is incredible. And it's because he started with speak for your servant is listening. And then he actually listened to what God said his entire life and did what it was. So we can take that free will and take Samuel's example and do what we're supposed to do. Or we can be like his sons and go our own way and see how that works out. Or be like the people of Israel and go our own way and see how that works out. You can tell which, which, which way I think is right, right? <laughs> Here's another big lesson I think that we need to grab as we walk away from this today. Samuel never cheated, never did any problems, no fault was found. And his sons walked away from him and did their own thing. And the people walked away and did their own thing. The lesson for us is that we can't control people. We can only control our own actions. Samuel did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, and then his sons did their own thing, and the people did their own thing. So we can follow Samuel's example, and we can follow the Lord with all of our heart to where we can be upright and full standing in front of the Lord. We can ask for forgiveness when we've made mistakes, and we can do our best to make up for it but we can't control other people's reactions or what they're going to do in response to ours. Parents, this is strong for us. Samuel went to battle for the people by going to prayer and by listening to the Lord. That's how we want to battle for our children also. But ultimately, they'll have their own decisions to make in life. It's called free will. And the people around you, whether it's the rest of your family or your workplace or your neighborhood, you can pray for them and go to battle and prayer for them and do godly things and follow the Lord. But ultimately, people will make their own decisions. And we're not really responsible for those. We are responsible for our own decisions, just as Samuel was in front of the Lord, in front of all the people at the end of his, his reign as judge. So as we walk away today, let's remember those things. We've got the free will to say something bold, like speak, Lord, for your servant is listening, and then follow him. And we can't control what others will do around us. All we can do is follow the Lord the best we know how and share Him with others the best we know how. As we go out this week in whatever way we can do it, sheltered in place, with maybe an online presence, let's follow the Lord in our quiet times. Follow Him in our busy times and show Him to other people wherever we go and try and model what Samuel showed us in following the Lord our entire life whenever we get a chance to meet Him. And however we get a chance to follow him. Hope you can stick around for our after church Zoom hangout. Would love to see some of those faces and say hi and just tell you I love you. But if you can't make it with us, I still love you. 
Can't wait to see you soon where we can gather together. We'll be continuing to meet in the parking lot for Sunday services as long as we can with the heat. We're meeting this Sunday, uh, which is probably happening right now as you're watching this. And next Sunday, it looks like the temperatures so far don't appear to be over 100. And so if we go at 9 o'clock in the morning, we should be in the low to mid 70s. And we have a lot of pop-ups for shade. So we're going to continue to try and do those outdoor services to make uh, more of a mitigation factor against this virus going around. And also just be able to preach the Lord's word and worship out in open air. Let the community in the area around it here and be invited in. Hope you can join us for one of those. If not, I'm so glad you enjoyed, joined us for the online service today. I hope to see or hear from you soon. We love you. God bless.